Let's start off with something uh, basic but perhaps misunderstood. What exactly is the placebo effect? The people sometimes say that the placebo effect is the effect of nothing, or of a sugar pill that has no effect, or the effect of something in there. That's an oxymoron. Something that has no effect can't have an effect. The placebo effect actually is a quantification of everything that surrounds pills and procedures. It's the symbols, the words, the rituals, the engaged doctor-nurse-patient relationship. It's everything that surrounds the delivery of the particular pills and medications and, and procedures. So it's this, we're swimming in it, but sometimes we don't see it. What are the rituals of care that you, that you talk about? Well, a, a ritual is prescribed pr behaviors that we more or less know we're going to do. It's repetitive. And when we go to a health care provider, a nurse, a doctor, uh, we know they're going to ask us about how we're doing. They're going to ask us if they have time, hopefully, how this affects our lives, how it affects our family and our work. It's, it's about uh, the diplomas on the wall, all these things that surround the drug. It's about the symbols that we have of white coats or stethoscopes. Um, all those, uh, and critical is, is this person that's engaging with me um, really committed to me? Can I trust them? Do I feel comfortable with them? Is this person really here for me? All those ingredients that surround the giving of a medication or taking, undergoing a procedure, that's what I call the ritual of care. So your research is really building the science behind the art of medicine. Uh, my research is absolutely related to the question of the art of medicine, which was much, much more important before the development of the clinical science of randomized control trials. Uh, before World War II, that was really, doctor uh, or a nurse understood, that was critical active ingredient. After the introduction of the randomized control trial, Physician's self-identity, nurse's self-identity to some extent, less so, is the science of care. We had a science of clinical medicine, the randomized controlled trial. We knew what the drugs were, we knew what they did, we really thought science was going to make the difference. And what my research is about is using the tools that generate evidence in the science of medicine, biomedicine, randomized control trials, genetic studies, um, neuroimaging studies, neurotransmitter studies. We're using those tools that generate knowledge, right, truth. And we're actually quantifying and providing explanatory models, uh, looking at the actual biochemistry of this stuff and actually the clinical outcomes also. We're looking at that and saying, we're using those tools and we're saying, wow, the art of medicine also is has quantifiable effects, that these effects rival sometimes the effects of drugs, they boost the effects of drugs, and we're actually making, um, taking the art of medicine, using this tools of evidence-based medicine, and saying that the art of medicine can be reframed as a science of clinical care. And so in fact, we're very much about moving the pendulum that swung very heavily to a pharmacocentric world a world where drugs is going to make the difference. We're moving that pendulum back that not only do we need good drugs, but we need good rituals of care that people feel are authentic and life-affirming. And that's going to make as much a difference, or maybe certainly a significant difference, as good drugs will make. Give us an example of the research that you and your colleagues are doing on the placebo effect to help help us understand what's what's happening and what the results have been from some of this this research. Sure, let me give you some simple examples. One study that we did with acute migraine attacks is that we gave people the um, the drug that we were testing, but we told them it was placebo. We took away the positive expectation and we compared that to giving them the drug with the word with the telling it's a drug. And when you, the, the, when we gave them the drug, but told them it was placebo, that's sort of like we took away the placebo effect and just left them with pure pharmacology effect. And when we added the word, the name of the drug, the drug became 50% more powerful. Just the word itself, it's experiment, right? 
changes the clinical outcome. And a, a related example by my, one of my colleagues was that they, uh, and a related example by one of my colleagues is really very clearly uh, demonstrates this. When people were given morphine in an IV without knowing when exactly they were getting it, right, a pre-programmed um, um, infusion of morphine, when they got received that morphine, or when they received the morphine in full display, they saw the nurse or the doctor giving them the injection. When they saw that encounter, when they participated in the engaged clinical interaction, the morphine was dramatically more effective in relieving pain than it was given surreptitiously without it, that engagement. These, those are two examples where just looking at the drugs, we can show that drug effects are modulated by something that are placebo-like effects. So how can the, the findings from your research uh, be applied to the, the, the primary care encounter? What, what, is, what does this all mean from the, from the provider standpoint? What, is it, what does it mean from the patient standpoint? You know, one of, I think one of the key things that the research that our team has done is demonstrate that engagement makes, uh, between patient and provider has an effect that's quantifiable and and mimics the way drugs work. Um, our, our, our research has shown that key words can change the outcome of a pharmaceutical. Our research has shown that honesty can make a difference. And I think the question is, providers uh, in primary care, for example, don't have much time. But I think that every provider can take 15, 30 seconds out there get to know the name of someone in a person's family that's key in the same, the same way you know what, what organs bleeding that just being able to establish a relationship that you're present a relationship of commitment um, and knowing that that's important it isn't necessarily the quantity of time it's the quality of time so I think the recognition that besides the drugs and procedures the provider the nurse or the doctor is a key ingredient of a culture of health will make a difference, even if we don't have much time. Ideally, we should change the system to reimburse for that time, and that's a larger question. So that's in relation to the provide, what does this research mean? In terms of the patient, I think we really have an optimistic message, hopefully not a too optimistic message, so people think that they can heal themselves without using uh, uh, professional people, but I think the um, message is that there's an internal pharmacy that actually changes how we perceive, how we introspect, how we know what's going on in our body, how we feel what's going on in our body, and that that pharmacy is as, can be as important, not always, but sometimes is, as drugs, and that there's some way that patients should know that their ability to feel engaged and connected and trusting in the provider is actually as important as taking the medications for that disease. If a funder came to you with a blank check, what, what would be the dream study, the, the study you've always wanted to do? I think one of the key studies I, I want to pursue is I actually want to get away from sugar pills. Um, I want to get away from uh, that way of quantifying and actually uh, surround the pill. And I want to go into the the clinical encounter, what are the concrete behaviors nurses and doctors can make change that will increase the effect of drugs, increase the effect of the clinical encounter, and decrease the side effects of drugs and the side effects of the clinical encounter. Um, I want to move to a more pragmatic or more, um, uh, I want to move into the center of the system and see if we can make differences where we can show that the art of medicine, if it's true, show if it's true, it, that the art of medicine will make a big difference as much as development of a really great new drug.